and do whatever it takes to bring down Gaddafi and usher in a new government. Uh, Gaddafi has been a thorn in the side of the New World Order for the last 40 years. Gaddafi was one of the enemies of the New World Order. Many Americans, even the left-wing leftists or progressive or alternative media, depending on how you define them, are pumping out some version of the propaganda that's been produced by the State Department, which is Gaddafi committed terrorism. He shot down the Pan Am flight over uh, Lockerbie, the Lockerbie flight. That, that was not a, a Gaddafi operation. It was a false flag operation. So the idea that Gaddafi is the premier terrorist who needs to be removed, of course, that argument gets a lot of play. But the big terrorists, the biggest terrorists in the world, are getting away with absolute murder at this very moment, and they haven't been. Their names aren't even known in the media, like Maurice Temple's man. King Idris not only had, uh, you know, rooms full of little boys that men from all over the world came to have sex with, but if the men particularly liked the little boys, they got to take them home with them. The reason that Gaddafi overthrew King Idris is because Gaddafi did not believe that the Quran allowed men to surround themselves with little boys for the purpose of sex. The military and Gaddafi did not believe that the Quran allowed men to do this to little boys. And so that's why they had the coup to get Idris out. And Idris, where did he go? Of course, to England. In my opinion, that's the pedophile capital of the world. Everything you know is wrong, particularly what uh, you're being told about. Libya, it's a vast country, hot, dusty, and dry, 90% desert. So you may be surprised to know there's a huge river flowing beneath it, a vital source of drinking water for Libya's cities, a man-made river that could one day even turn desert into farmland. It's called the Great Man-Made River, and it flows beneath these sands. It is colossal in scale. Libyans call it the eighth wonder of the world. There is water in the Libyan Sahara deserts since uh, a million years ago, and we have to use it. We have to use this water. It carries hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of water from the Sahara in the south to the northern coastline every day. We try to make sure that uh, the data that we, we give to the living authority is accurate and correct. And um, you know, if the water stops, then so does the country. So it's, it's very important. For them. Libya's ambitions don't end with drinking water. Planners here want to irrigate to reduce the country's heavy dependence on food imports. The parched lands around this huge man-made lake near Benghazi are slowly being turned to agricultural use. Tony Allen is a water specialist who's studied the man-made river for decades. He says it certainly won't be enough to green Libya. Well, there's not enough water now and certainly for a future doubled population. There's, uh, it was just no chance that it will produce the food that it needs. This project, this great man-made river project, has been in the works for many years, since the 1980s. Have you heard of it? Well, I hadn't. I hadn't heard of it until Friday, March 4th. The 1st of September marks the anniversary of the opening of this major stage of Libya's great man-made project. This incredibly huge and successful water scheme is virtually unknown in the West, yet it rivals and even surpasses all of our greatest development projects. The leader of the so-called advanced countries, the United States of America, cannot even bring itself to acknowledge Libya's great man-made river. The West refuses to recognize that a small country with a population no more than 4 million can construct anything so large without borrowing a single cent from the international banks. Oh, my God. How did they do that? 
The goal of the Libyan Arab people embodied in the great man-made river project is to make Libya a source of agricultural abundance capable of producing adequate food and water to supply its own needs and to share with neighboring countries. In short, the river is literally Libya's meal ticket to self-sufficiently. Self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency? Absolutely not allowed. Banksters don't like that sort of thing. And do whatever it takes to bring down Gaddafi and usher in a new government.